<laughs> uh, hi, my name's David Thomas. Uh, I'm a miniature sculptor, miniature designer for Games Workshop. How long have you been working at Games Workshop? Uh, in total, uh, about 14 years. Uh, four years is a... No, 13 years. 13 years. Uh, four years as a miniature sculptor. Uh, then I actually left for a year, so... 12 years, that number keeps going down. And, I won't tell anybody else, but yeah. they think it's 14. And uh, eight years as a sculptor, a professional sculptor. Can you tell me a little bit about how Games Workout has changed over the years in terms of what you guys do and how they put their business? Um, the company's been around for about 30 years. Uh, generally speaking, it was primarily small, small run metal miniatures. Um, mainly for role playing and eventually into tabletop gaming, which is kind of how, kind of what's used to uh, for Warhammer and 40k these days. Huge mass battles that people have. The main difference that's because it is sort of the same company, the main difference is that we're a much larger concern business-wise and we tend to sell more plastic miniatures than anything else. And how about you personally, has your style or the tools that you use changed over the years? Are you guys still doing it the way that you did it when you came in? Um, the actual techniques of sculpting have been around for many hundreds of years, just replication of real things or uh, using your imagination and realising those. In terms of tools, um, we're starting to move into more digital uh, mediums, such as digital tooling, all the way up to digital processing of uh, masters, and then through that into a uh, complete digital sculpt. So do you think that the artists of the future, if they want to make miniatures, they're going to need to know both the way to do it by hand and by computer? What would you recommend somebody coming in? Uh, I would say learn it physically first. Um, if you learn the manual skills, they'll help you when it comes to transferring those skills to being a digital sculptor. There's a certain discipline involved that you pick up uh, and it makes the transition easier and it also gives you a better finished product because you have more of an idea of, of the three dimensions involved. What are these, what are this stuff down here, like what sort of things you have here? Uh, all kinds of bits and bobs. Uh, these are my two primary sculpting tools. Uh, this is known as a, uh, a wax carver, wax carver number five. Uh, that'll be used quite often. This is my favourite, which is a modified Games Workshop sculpting tool, which we sell. One end, you have a just kind of slight uh, with a file and sandpaper. Nice. Just made it a little bit sharper? Uh, no, no, I completely modified the shape of it. Uh, this was quite a, a round, uh, almost semi-sphere. Um, I flattened it off, put a flat surface on one side and left the back surface slightly beveled and that allows me to get a, a nice smooth surface when I'm manipulating green stuff or whatever clay I'm using. Uh, this side is actually a, a very small version, slightly more cumbersome version of the Wax 5. Uh, I thought that may help me with uh, doing things like faces, but I actually tend to find I'll use the Wax 5 more than anything else. And uh, what sort of miniatures can we attribute to you when you have on the market um, I've worked on various Games Workshop races. Uh, most notably, I think, would be Space Marines. I've spent probably about half my sculpting career at Games Workshop sculpting Space Marines. Um, Space Wolves, uh, all the way through to the recut tactical frames and assault frames. So do you guys, is it one person that works on one particular model and then or do you guys share, like somebody work on the legs and somebody works on the torso? Um, when we're making plastic kits, um, the splitting up of individual uh, anatomy parts may be the, the best way most efficient way to work. Um, one of the most recent Space Wolf, so sorry, one of the most recent Space Marine projects I've worked on was uh, Sanguinary Guard, the Blood Angels Sanguinary Guard. Um, I was responsible for the legs, the torso, and the heads. Um, 
one of my uh, colleagues, Martin Footy, he was responsible for the uh, the weapons, the backpacks, and the arms. And we both worked on the shoulder pads. It's a, it's a collaborative effort. Yeah, very much so. It's very rare that you'll find one person working on one particular project uh, exclusively. Um, so communication is key. You also got to get on with the people that you're on the project with. Um, but some, I mean, it's not a rule. Sometimes you do get the odd person that will work on one thing, and that will be their life for half a year or something like that. So it takes a long time to get started. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Especially depending on what scale you're using. Um, when we do things like monsters, such as the, the Griffin. I mean, that was both the Griffin and the Rider were sculpted by Brian Nelson. Uh, it's a fantastic piece of work, um, but that was, I think, took him about 30 weeks to make. Great, thank you so much. No problem. Oh, we've got some great miniatures coming out. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a good day.